Hey, welcome everyone to What's What with Old Man Liver. This is where I get to say whatever the fuck I want about any fucking topic and have any guest whatever the fuck I want on my own show. So this is my special place, but I hope you find a lot of entertainment. And today we have a very special guest, adult film star Daisy Ducati is in the house. Hello. So we're going to talk to her <laughs> about all the interesting things about the industry she's in and uh, how you know, the good sides and the bad sides and all the other shit she has going on. And, uh, and then um, it's going to just get silly. So we'll get started right away. Daisy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Now, here, here I got a question for you. The, like Everybody says uh, like porn star, but in reality, most adult film actors or actresses aren't stars right they're just everybody just says star like you're a legitimate so, star because <laughs> you've won like avian awards and all that kind of shit so yeah. you're like a star but everyone says they're a porn star but that's not really true right so i've been in the industry for a long time and we've had this discussion a lot over the years right. like all, on twitter there's like arguments I'm about sure. it i can imagine and people of my generation of porn performers uh there was like this hesitation to call ourselves stars because like only Spiegler girls are porn stars or like only girls with avians are porn stars or this, that, and the other thing. But now we have things like OnlyFans and like Sex Panther and all these little like things where you can just sit at home with an iPhone and make porn. Yeah. So Yeah, so and, how do you clarify that in today's So age? now it's getting a little muddier and like performers that are sitting at home with an iPhone or having a million followers. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, there are, there, there's less of a distinction than there used to be. Okay. But I would say from my own personal distinction, you have to have at least shot a few studio scenes to okay. be considered a proper That's porn fair. star. Instead of just filming yourself doing this shit. You know, yeah. Like the, the, the amateur stuff definitely has a place and definitely makes a lot of money. Right. But I think it's a different market. Gotcha. Um, so how long have you been in the porn industry? Uh, about 10 years now. <laughs> okay. And and how has have you seen that change in just the 10 years? Oh, man, it's a whole different world now. And I will tell you, the way that the industry is is not what I signed up for. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? It's changed, that, changed for the worse? Well, I mean, no, not necessarily the worst. It's just a lot more work now. <laughs> <laughs> really? Why would yeah. that be? So when I first started, like studio scenes were pretty much it. There was like studio scenes and then there was webcamming. And they were very separate worlds. And I got into like shooting weird fetish stuff and then studio scenes. And like I had to work my way up the ladder there. And then basically it was just like you show up to set, you do the thing, you get your paycheck, you go home. And right. then you don't work for another week or two. And... Uh, nowadays, it, there's so much like independent work, and you like have to have an OnlyFans, and you have to have a Sex Panther, and you have to have all these like fan site type things. Yeah. And then that means you have to also be a producer and an editor and a marketer and do all right. this other stuff that I didn't have to do before. I just showed up and looked pretty <laughs> and had other people doing all that shit. Yeah. yeah. So like, so I, I guess there's good and bad to that because someone can propel themselves from nothing just based on their own totally. skills and, and shit where before you had to get signed to one of these big totally. adult companies. Like right? the barrier of entry is really low these days. So like anybody can just go out and make money doing porn. Like literally anybody. <laughs> right. Because there's a fetish for anything, right? <laughs> exactly. Like that like, old guy. Like You could totally fucking... do it. <laughs> and so I'm like. counting on it. Uh, not you, oh, but sorry. like <laughs> a fat old guy could totally <laughs> thanks, do. Thanks. Here's um, five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, there have been some positive changes in that vein because now, like, studios are less able to take advantage of people because before, like, you needed the studios, right? And so, like, you really had to like be on your best behavior and not piss off the director, not piss off the producer, and like do whatever they told you and get your money. But nowadays, like, you don't need to shoot for studios at all. So, like, if studios want you to shoot for them, they have to be nice and be respectful and respect your boundaries and yeah. <laughs> treat you like a normal employee. No, no, absolutely. Because it, it sounds very similar to the music industry mm -hmm. because um, I have a re I've had a record company for 15 or 20 years. And then I've on the creative side as a guitar player, 
And I remember when we started the record company in 2005, it was still CDs were primarily how you got your music. And then yeah. all of a sudden overnight, it switched to digital. And then, you know, you used to want to go get signed by all the big major labels. And now you can just be your own label. And if you're good at, at technology and marketing, you can, you know, you've got a shot where you don't have to hope to get seen by the right guy at the right club in Hollywood or mm -hmm. whatever. So there's good and bad in music. And it seems kind of the same with porn. And now you can hang on to your own masters. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> And you control a lot more of your shit. Which, yeah. So I'm all for that. And that's the other thing is like a lot of times content in the industry gets resold and repackaged and resold for years and years and years. And a performer shooting for a studio only gets paid once for that scene. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no there's no royalties. Like sometimes they have affiliate programs, but there's no royalties. So now you can own content, sell it and then repackage it yourself and resell it yourself or like license it to a studio or do whatever you want with it for years. OK, interesting. So like, Jen, do you still, is there still that, that side of it where you show up to a studio, they hand you a paycheck, like as a, I guess, an independent contractor, mm -hmm. and then you go your merry way. Does that still work that way sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I still shoot for studios occasionally, not as much as I used to. Oh my God. When I first started, I was shooting like, like three, four days a week for studios and it was exhausting. Oh yeah. Fuck. I mean, um, fucking can get exhausting, right? Right. Right. And like, it's, Especially when you do the weird stuff. <laughs> right. So did you did you uh, t hone in on a certain niche, like a fetish to get to work your way in? You know, it's funny. So when I first started, I was doing like mainstream modeling and I just like picked up a couple of weird fetish gigs for the money. And I was just like, this seems fun. It's not. Is that so how hard. you got into the industry? Yeah. Just and so I, I started doing wrestling scenes. <laughs> right. I know that's a thing. And I didn't think it was a big thing deal but like because i it wasn't something that i watched so i wasn't that familiar with right. it i was just like this sounds like fun let's try it yeah and i found someone that was like willing to train me and pay me to shoot and so i was like okay that's a pretty good deal like this seems fun and so oh, i started shit. doing Tra that train you like you have to actually learn how to wrestle yeah to like a, a lot of the wrestling stuff is fully competitive <laughs> really yeah like you actually have to know what you're doing but it's and said then, you're not actually wrestling it's acting right or, or you no, are. you're actually wrestling really? it, well it depends on who you're shooting for okay because some of some of the wrestling scenes are staged to like show a specific fetish like okay this person's gonna win and then there's gonna be these specific moves but Generally speaking, it's actually harder to do it that way. Oh, shit. <laughs> so most of the time, yeah, most of the time happens. they'll just book two girls that know how to wrestle and let them do their thing. Oh shit! And like it's up to the girls to like know that they don't want to hurt each other. Yeah. Does but anybody ever actually get hurt? People do get injured, and <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day. A lot of the people that were around when I first started have all not retired from porn, but retired from wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> because they it's a got double whammy. injuries or things got too scary. But a lot of us have actually trained in jujitsu. Oh, shit. So so does the, does the porn itself ever get dangerous where you can get hurt just kanking and shit? There's definitely some onset injuries. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. They, does it get weird There's, and gross like someone's ass is bleeding and this yeah, is that. Yeah, or... I've definitely been pooped on. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. I guess that's going to happen at times. Yeah, it happens. Now, when that happens, do they keep the footage? Or do... No, 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 <laughs> there, no. There's they a have fetish to. for that, too, I'm sure, right? Well, like scat or whatever but that it's fucking borders called. on obscenity, and you can actually go to jail for it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that borders on obscenity. Cause well, because if you shit yourself, it's illegal. Obscenity but if you don't... isn't clearly defined. Right. Like That's why I never understood that shit. Like, what's obscene? To one person is totally different to another person. Yeah, and like that's that's and a hard. It's it's so weird, and it's just like if if no if everybody involved is a grown up that consents and no one's getting injured. Right. <laughs> like, Although <laughs> I don't it's really like stunt consider work. it my problem. It, it, occasionally, you're gonna get shit on and and hurt, break a leg or something. I yeah, think. but shit happens. <laughs> so to speak. Definitely so, happens. So like when you when you start getting in the industry, was it? Like, how do they figure out where to put you? Like, do you fill out a fucking form going, I'll do this, 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 and that, but I won't, you know, do this, this, and that? And, and it's like, that's what they use to... Um, It depends. So a lot of people start out in the industry with an agent, which I am adamantly against just because I've had so many terrible agents. Oh, yeah, that juke but... over or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
so in that case like yeah you do just list out what you do and don't want to do and like what you're available for and then the agent handles it from there um but porn agents are a mess right <laughs> most of them are terrible um like scumbag yeah, yeah and like not even like normal scumbag shit like that's in the music industry too i'll tell you that yeah like they they try to own people in weird ways or they'll like say you're not available because they're trying to book someone else or like wait own, own you like yeah like i there is there's one particular agent that i'm not going to name that like his girls are like his children and he has like rules <laughs> about their lives that have nothing to do with their work and so like, it's like they have to live in a certain area they like can't have boyfriends like <laughs> all sorts of weird and human trafficking like, type shit yeah that, that yeah that's that's and like, like but they agree to his rules because they know they're going to make money working with him interesting wow so there's people that are willing to do that just to and when somebody approaches me with those kinds of rules i'm like i'm a fucking grown-up yeah. <laughs> like, no, you're you. not gonna tell me how to live my goddamn life right yeah but thanks <laughs> thanks anyway yeah but, uh, like i i'm grown i'm cool that's crazy and i can i can answer emails myself <laughs> so so for you personally is there like is there action do you ever actually enjoy it or is it always acting I mean, like, sex is sex. And, like, sometimes it's going to feel good. Sometimes it's going to be meh. Right. Um, the thing is, like, a lot of times porn shoots are more awkward than anything else. Yeah. Because it's not like you're fucking because you're genuinely attracted to the person. Right. You might not have even met that person till 10 minutes ago. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's what I was thought. It's kind of harder for guys because you got to get it up. And oh, I guess man. now it's better with Viagra and shit. I but... do not envy men in the adult industry. <laughs> like, their job is so much harder than mine. <laughs> yeah because but and that always fascinated and you know i haven't been around the porn industry my only experience was uh i was doing a i have a company called vegas voodoo and we were doing some uh voodoo dolls and setting up a horror movie at this one movie site in california where they it's one of those places where they have acres and acres of land and they use you recognize the the fake church and the fake school thing from a bunch of tv shows and movies yeah. and they just happen so this was a horror movie that we were working on and just right next door was a western porn and you're talking about like everyone working on the movie set is you know pretty like you know open anything been on a million sets and all that stuff and that, but you can't have someone like canking in the background and the <laughs> side of your eye and not, I mean, eventually you just quit talking. You just start, you just finish watching. Yeah. But I thought it was so fascinating. And then when they got done, you know, it was, it was like a Western set. So they had a cowboy hat on and all that shit. Cute. And uh, yeah. And then they just like, okay, nice to meet you. Put on, you know, put on your pants and good to see you. See you at the yeah. next. And I'm like, that's gotta be such a fucking weird fascinating like just that and like after you've been doing it for a while it just becomes like another day at the office and it just right. feels very casual and you don't think of it as like sex like it's just it's not the same thing it's, yeah but now is it hard when like say you you date someone that's not in the industry to understand what you're doing for a living like, yeah, it it can be very complicated, and a lot, a lot of porn performers have, like, extensive relationship issues because it's just, it's very hard to date someone who's not in that world and, like, has never done it. Um, I, it's, 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 it's a hard thing to explain to people who've never just been there and seen it, you know? Like, yeah. how do you explain that, like, okay, I'm going to go, like, fuck a bunch of people that you've never even met, but, right. like, it's not a big deal because I don't care. I'm just doing it right. to get and paid. Then the, you know, and then the... the I guess the significant other is going to be like, do I watch that? Do I not watch it? Do I get pissed off? Do I, yeah. like, uh, I can accept it on one level, but it's hard on another. I, I could see and that's kind of... Like, even if the person understands on, like, a logical level, it's hard to control the emotions around it, yeah. you know? But it's... The way I see it is it's just another form of non-monogamy. Like, it people can be in non-monogamous relationships and have multiple partners as long as they communicate properly and agree on what the rules are. Right. And I, the way I see it is it's just another form of non-monogamy. So like, like an open relationship in yeah, a way. Yeah, kind of. And yeah. like each person sets their own rules for their own relationship. Like, but personally, like work is work for me and home life is home life. Right. So you're able to separate them pretty effectively. Yeah. Is there a lot of 
dating that goes on in the porn industry because of people not relating that's not in the industry? Yeah, there's a lot of people having, like, <laughs> I see so many people getting into relationships with coworkers, and then it gets weird, and then, like, work gets weird. And <laughs> right. And then it's even weirder. Yeah. It's <laughs> like just, an, uh, a, a weird workplace is even weirder when you... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like, I personally wouldn't have a problem with, like, having a partner that's also in the industry, but, like, that could get also very awkward. Right. You know, like in what way? Um, I know people who have had to film their partner shooting with other people. Interesting. <laughs> like that can get awkward. Right. <laughs> um, and also like if you're having relationship problems and like you have to be on set together, <laughs> like that right. can yeah. be uncomfortable. You're, you're pissed off each other and then all of a sudden you got to. So one thing that I keep hearing about from a director friend of mine is like she will hire people to shoot with their partner because like I, I, it seems like a good idea like if you and your partner are both performing let's book you together because you're going to have chemistry and a lot of people a lot of guys have a boner problems with their own partner <laughs> really and that would make me upset yeah, <laughs> like I like I'm not going to shame anybody for having a body issue but like if it's my own partner. <laughs> yeah, so you can't get it up for your own partner, yeah. but then you go shoot a scene and you're fine. Exactly. Yeah, that might fuck up a relationship. I, I, I would be that. upset about that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> some, yeah, that's, that's accidentally bringing your home life into your work life. And like, I think for some guys, like the pressure just is too much sometimes, but like, bro, if we're dating. <laughs> yeah, right. you, you should, it should be a little lighter if you're yeah, already seen like the person. It's not, it's not like someone you just met 10 minutes ago. Right. Yeah. That's, that's trippy. So like, um, so I understand you've, you've actually won AVN awards, what, two years in a row? Yeah. Or, that's congratulations. That's, Niche performer of the year for the last two years. That's awesome. And once again, is that, is that the wrestling niche you were talking about? Yeah. I mean, like over the years, I've pretty much done all the weird stuff. <laughs> right. Well, what what but, would you not do, or have you not do, done, mm, or will you do anything? You know what? I've had to say a lot of no's to farting. Interesting. Because that's much that much in demand, and yeah, it's really in demand. What and the, the fuck, funny thing man? is, like, I consider I, myself pretty fucked up, but I don't need to be farted on or fart on people. Right. I, and like the reason I say no is not necessarily because I'm like super against it. It's just that I don't want to be the fart girl. <laughs> yeah. Aren't there already people that are, have that yeah. niche covered? Yeah, and the thing is, there's so few people that are willing to do it that the fans go nuts once they find out that you will do it, oh, and then that becomes all you do. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. And, and I've how seen do you, it happen. Do, do they take? reverse gas pills so that you can fart on command i mean there's different ways to do it you can do it with like eating certain foods or whatever right, but load up on the beans I'm some, do my and porn sometimes scene. they just straight up take a bicycle pump and shove air up there oh. <laughs> that's i've done a lot of dumb shit in my day but that's i I didn't yeah, know you could get paid for that. That's another I thing. I, I like. I don't want the cramps. <laughs> yeah. What the, yeah. Like, and so, so they want to just see pretty chicks fart, or they they fart on somebody, or they. So like, how does that work? With every fetish, there are like fifty sub fetishes. <laughs> right. So with farting, there's like people who want to be farted on, people who want to fart on you, people who want to see you fart, <laughs> like, right? People who want to talk about how your fart smells. That's crazy. So, I mean, you, and you're not, you're watching something on a computer or an iPhone or whatever. You can't smell the thing anyway. But, but they want to hear you describe it. <laughs> wow. So that's a thing. So you get to describe the smell. Oh, fuck. And I, I've that's... had to do that for many feet videos, which is interesting. I know there's people that have a <laughs> foot thing, but that's, yeah. yeah. You'd yeah. be surprised. I think foot fetish is probably like the most common one. And it's the one that people are always so ashamed of, too. And it's I like I just want to shake people and be like, everybody has a foot fetish. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if someone <laughs> has nice, 
pretty feet, you know. I'm like, right, like, it. I, I, literally, I in, like, one out of every five people I talk to online has, like, an intense foot fetish. That's interesting. So that's more widespread than we realize. And but. I have people contact me all the time, like, on OnlyFans and stuff, and they're like, oh, I'm into something kind of weird. I hope you're okay with it. Like, and I'm like, have you seen what I've done? Yeah. <laughs> weird is what I do for a living. Me? Like, I, your foot fetish is fine. Exactly. Yeah, because I don't I, I have a foot fetish, but I always believe in including them. And, you know, in, yeah. in, in my book, which I have a chapter on the 10 rules of great kanking, that's part of my thing. You got to use every piece of your body. Right. You got to get every orifice. It's an erogenous like, zone. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's nothing wrong with that if you're getting, getting the, using a foot to <laughs> whack someone's juker, that's... Something different than the mouth yeah. or the hand. Oh, I get, it's a I get great it. ab workout too. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a good it's a good workout, and that's why I, clearly uh, you stay in great shape. Which you know, <laughs> I'm sure that what you do for a living is nice that you get paid to stay in shape. I'm a very active person. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So the the fart thing you're willing to do, but you just wouldn't do it regularly where it becomes a yeah, thing where it's all. I feel like I have to draw the line somewhere, you know. <laughs> so like, what if somebody goes, "I want to do a uh, film with." Three, three uh, crackers in your bunghole. Would you go? I can't. My bunghole can't take that. I'm yeah, not gonna... no, nothing that's gonna like injure me. Right. Also, like I've done a lot of crazy shit and a lot of like crazy BDSM shit. But like what's the cra- what's the craziest thing in your mind that you've ever done on film? Um, I got waterboarded with squirt. What? Yeah. <laughs> Actually fucking water boarded with I've been crucified too. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, I I believe that. And like <laughs> Like I, no, like literally tied up on a cross and hung by my wrists. <laughs> and then you're kanked while that's happening or how is that a No, thing? I think you're I just, was you're being just electrocuted naked. while that yeah. was happening. <laughs> Hopefully pretend electrocuted. What? So you're actually legit? Now, do you like that kind of thing and um, I, I do like electro play. So um, oh, it's I, so even got a term electro play. That's I'm amazing. not, I'm, I wouldn't identify as like a submissive or a masochist, but I am a stunt person. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you like the more active so, shit. Yeah. I like trying to see what my body can handle. I and get that. Especially like my first couple of years. I, so I really got my start working for kink. And I used to live like down the street from the armory. So anytime anyone would cancel their cancel their shoot for any reason, I'd be there, oh, okay. <laughs> which is one of the reasons I worked so much the first couple of years. Well, yeah, that's smart. Um, and it was really fun for me to like try all this stuff that I never would have thought to even try in my personal life yeah. <laughs> and just to see if I could do it. Right. Yeah. It's like a challenge. Like, can I hang upside down and have you know, four guys doing this yeah, and, upside, and like, my foot up someone's ass? I feel so much more badass knowing that I've done it. You know? Yeah. I, I, I actually get that. And that's also cool. as a, as a dominant I can go a lot harder on people knowing that, like, I've already experienced this. Yeah, so I, know I know how exactly. far I can take this shit. Exactly. And but I know you, you're being you a little like, bitch. Do you like just the electric electrocution stuff or do you like all that kind of dominant? Uh... Um, I Like, I like BDSM in general. I definitely identify more as a top. Okay. Yeah. So there's tops and bottoms, right? Just yeah. like, yeah, okay. But the electro play stuff is fun. Like there was a website called Electro Sluts that I was really popular on for a while because I was the only dominant that enjoyed the electricity. Electro Sluts. <laughs> okay. There we go. And the thing about it is if you're playing with electricity, you're going to get shocked, even right. if it's unintentional. Like it's just going to happen. You're going to, you're going to shock yourself at some point. And so they had a hard time booking tops for that website because they were all scared of the electricity. <laughs> As many people are. And so I was on there like for a while. It was almost once a week <laughs> shooting for this so, website. Do you think you've had any permanent damage from being electrocuted that often? No, like there's there's safe ways to do it. And like now we live with such technology that there's a whole plethora of toys designed specifically for fucking. <laughs> right. Which I, I love, the, you know. So you don't have to, like, go stick a fork in a socket or anything. Right, yeah. You can, there's tricks. actually toys designed to create yeah. that effect. Interesting. Um, and then, it, I mean, I've always found it funny because it's, 
just, you know, you're talking about like what is obscene and what isn't and who decides that kind of shit. That's always fascinating because even when you think about the laws that are out there, like prostitution is illegal. And that's if two consenting adults. Except in Nevada. Have, can't, right. Except in Nevada. <laughs> well, certain counties of Nevada. Yeah. Um, but most of the country and I would imagine a good portion of the world, it's illegal to kank someone if you pay them for it. Which, But it, if you film it and you call it porn, then it's legal. Like, mm -hmm. how does that work? That doesn't make any fucking sense. It's so stupid. Right? All the <laughs> laws of I, like, I'm just annoyed that. The government tries to get in people's industries and bedrooms. It's and so just... stupid. And there's way better things they could be regulating. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like if you, you know, I want to make sure whatever my burger I'm eating isn't spoiled and shit. I like get... stop worrying about what grownups are doing on grown up time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's I, I 100% agree with you. So, um, so now at this point in career, like, do you do you is there is ageism a thing in the porn industry still, even though there's different fetishes for it yes and i am like 150 years old in porn years <laughs> oh, tell me about it. that's why i'm old man liver because i fucking when i turn 30 like, oh, you're still doing rock and what's weird though is like usually performers my age eventually get to transition into being a milf <laughs> right but milf also comes with kind of a certain look and i don't fit the milf look at all so i just like went straight from like teen to weird <laughs> okay but that's an angle too right like yeah. if, if everybody else is going the milf direction you're doing the weird shit yeah i'm like, just i'm here to do the weird shit so like like what age is the milf category see milf's not really milf is way more a look than an age like i know girls in their 20s doing milf porn <laughs> right yeah that's what you know sometimes i you know i'll, I'll see and the i know shit, girls like, in their 50s a, doing milf yeah, porn. Like, like she's too young to be a milf i'm like but then they're, and now is there like a gilf then thing? Then again, I, I was doing teen stuff till my 30s. So. Well, it's nice that you look young and you can, yeah. that's a, a compliment. So that's cool that, you know, but I can. It's, it's pretty awkward though, like shooting babysitter scenes with the MILF that's my age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's like, I'm like, wait a second. I, I'm, right. I, I'm in the great, great grandpa category. If I get into the shit at this point, that's fucked up. It's but, so um, funny. Like, yeah. yeah, age isn't real in porn. It's just what you look like. Right. And I get that someone can have a motherly look, even if they're younger, mm -hmm. or they can be a little older, but look like they're in that Also, milf. like, uh, somewhere along the line, someone decided that MILFs have to have big tits. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just a thing. And who decides that shit? Like, that's another thing. Like, Porn you, you know, searches. <laughs> like in the, you know, I'm dating myself, but, you know, like, back in the day, like, I know, you know, if you, if you watch a baby being born video from the seventies, you see someone, you know, with a giant bush and you're like, Oh my God, was there any hygiene back then in the seventies? What the fuck? And then somehow we went to that, to like the landing strip and then eventually just totally bare naked. And that's the, and now men have to manscape and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, who decides this shit? Like who starts those trends? You know, I, uh, a friend of mine, that's a director, Glenn King was telling a story the other day about how, razor technology actually kind of changed the trend because back in the day razors weren't as good as they are now that is real fucking scary. interesting that's the best answer i've heard so f to me bringing it because i brought this up on at several radio broadcasts and shit and like nobody can give me an answer because I'm, I'm like is it some devil wears prada chick that just decides this trend is going to happen or is it this nope. director safety that's... razors <laughs> so, so, so razors are safer now safer now so people got more can you imagine trying to shave your genitals with a straight razor well no shit you know, like, and that's my big <laughs> thing terrifying. now every time i go out i gotta fucking shave my whole body i'm like <laughs> dude, dudes didn't have to do this when i was you know in the yeah. fucking 80s i'm like but uh, now it's a it's a thing, and I just find that fascinating that hygiene has a trend, and and I've heard that like uh, crabs doesn't even exist anymore because of yeah they're pretty much shaving. extinct yeah they're like extinct now like, like you, you used to have to worry about for you young people back in the day when you came <laughs> you had to worry about of course AIDS and venereal diseases but you always had you had these little like tick type things that were they called crabs. And they'd fucking live in your pubic hair and shit like that. That was a real <laughs> fucking thing. It sounds like a horror movie to you, but that was a real thing when we were young. Now they don't exist because of people's hygiene. So I, I wonder, guess 
I wonder if anyone has made a horror movie about crabs. Well, maybe we should. <laughs> like mutant crabs that bite your wiener off or That's something. A, hmm, <laughs> hmm, maybe. Yeah, maybe <laughs> we should do that. So like now the, in, with the industry the way it is, do you ever think about doing your own production company and having your own? Um, I've thought about it, but I like to keep my life with as minimal liability as possible. Ah, good call. Yeah, I've gone the opposite route with yeah. whiskeys and restaurants and, and bars. like now most of my income comes from like solo stuff that I put out and produce myself. Okay. And it's really easy for me to just like set up with an iPhone at home by myself. That's awesome. And, do and then it. you just upload it and a bunch yeah, of people. And like but how does that make money? Like it's it's a lot more work. Um, and is that like the OnlyFans stuff? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. So like OnlyFans and like sexting is huge right now. Like there's there's websites for it, and sexting and phone sex are bigger than you could ever imagine <laughs> wow and is that like individualized with people mm -hmm. that contact you yeah like people can straight up call me no that doesn't scare you or concern you well, with all the psychos out I, there? it's not like i just give out my phone number um there's like websites that are specifically designed for this so that they call through the website and so the it's website like uber contacts or yeah <laughs> like yeah, there's yeah. a fake number or whatever. And it like and automatically yeah. charges them and like keeps track of it, but it like keeps my personal information personal. Okay. That's good. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Lots changed. And even, um, and it, it was nice. Daisy Ducati, um, hosted our benefit concert for breast cancer called breast fest. And previously, uh, years ago I had ginger Lynn and I was actually Love watching her. porn the other day. Right. Like, and I'm like, she's still doing it. Like, or not that long ago, I guess. So funny story. Yeah, please. Ginger Lynn made this. What? You're fucking kidding <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, I got it from her at Avian. Oh my God. That's, that's what a cool connection there. It's hilarious. Yeah, I, love I got her. to know Ginger a little bit. She was, you know, at the time, you know, telling me she was dealing with, you know, having kids in school and the flack she got, you know, from mm -hmm. being in the, in the industry she was in. And this is in L.A. of all things. Right. But it was cute when I brought her up. We did uh, the show at the Viper Room in West Hollywood. And she was all worried about uh, everyone had forgotten her. And uh, you know, this oh. is like the 90s or something, you know, it was, it wasn't that far from when she was at her pinnacle. Yeah. And I'm like, trust me, nobody's forgotten you. Like, right. I'm sure as shit. <laughs> Even people setting stuff up, they were all giddy, like, that's Ginger Lynn, oh my God. And, you know, they've seen every star in the world coming through the Viper Room, but Ginger Lynn throws them off. And and I always liked her scenes because I really bought into, like, oh, she's, in, you know, she'd do, like, a lesbian scene, but it wasn't just, like, to get off. It's like, wow, she really looks like she's in love with her, and that's hot. She is into like, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is into it, like, passionate. I'm like, that's fucking cool. So, so she's an idol of yours or? Yeah. So she, her podcast was actually one of the first podcasts I ever was on. Really? <laughs> Way back in the day. And That's like, crazy. She I've has her own out podcast. Her house and Everybody has her own fucking podcast now. Yeah. Well, actually, no, it was a, she had a serious XM show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I remember that. She had a channel or something, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. They had like the whole channel. Vivid yeah. office. Yeah. That's a right. A Vivid channel. Yeah. Yeah. Is Vivid still a player in the current industry or? Not really. They kinda... I'm not sure if they got, I'm not sure exactly what their deal is now, but I know the Vivid building is no more. Oh, okay. Wow. So they might be, a. Uh, uh, they might have died with the previous version of the industry that was more video and CD based or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Like even DVDs aren't like, as popular as they used to be i just did a bunch of conventions and i like stocked up on all these dvds to sell and like had a big old box of them i was carrying around didn't really sell people a still have dvd, DVD players <laughs> i didn't fucking sell crazy. a single I didn't dvd <laughs> that's amazing when you can get so much as a consumer which is me you can get so much free online. I'd never think to even go buy a DVD nowadays. I mean, a lot of people buy them at conventions for like the collectible value of well, it. Well, yeah, because you, you can sign it and, and all that. Yeah, that's a little And different. like, that's what I was thinking. But people were way more interested in just buying a picture because they, they've seen it all, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. No, that's cool. That's cool. So what what are you doing nowadays? And do you have other projects besides uh, the porn stuff that you do? Yeah, I have too many projects. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I I wear a lot of hats, so I've I've been doing horror movies lately. 
Oh, fucking cool. Which is fun. Um, I've actually been stunt training for the, the project I'm working on with Tom Devlin, learning how to sword fight. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> That's, and that's pretty not fun. porn sword fighting. That's no, a real no, no, like real sword fight. Right. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about the project, right, but right. it's gonna be a I don't really get you in cool trouble, but... like sci fi horror type thing. That's awesome. Now you does do you get kind of typecast to do the nudity shots and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. <laughs> And like, I'm cool with it. Like I have no problem. Right. Like I'd walk around the street naked if I was allowed to. Yeah, but <laughs> me too, actually. And sometimes I do. Yeah. But um, it is weird because like, I love telling my grandparents about the horror movies I've done, but I can't show them any of them because my right. tits are out in all right. of them. <laughs> it was a great thing, but don't watch it. Yeah, yeah don't watch it. But they know it's not a big deal. Yeah. They and don't, don't they say it. when you first get into the adult film industry that like every, you got to be ready for every fucking family member or an extended uncle and this, that to have seen you doing all this crazy shit. Yes. And does that take a, does it take time to, to handle that shit as you progress into the industry? So, I mean, I feel lucky in the sense that any family member whose opinion I care about doesn't give a shit what I do as long as I'm being safe and responsible about it. That's awesome. Um, so like it wasn't a big deal with my family, but I do like to warn new people or people that are thinking about getting into the industry. Like they will find out right. <laughs> just assume yeah, that you they can't will. hide shit. These um, days. and you also never know how perverted everyone else is <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> until they start calling you out on your porn. <laughs> right. You're like, well, why are you watching yeah, that? Like, where, where did yeah. you see that? <laughs> You subscribe to shit on my cracker.com, so don't give me yeah. fuck for that. It's crazy. And like I have people coming out of the woodwork and people I haven't talked to since high school are like, oh, I saw you getting crucified and electrocuted. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, why were you watching? Yeah, that? why would you have <laughs> even found that ever? So you're the fucked up one. Exactly. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, that's cool. Well, I know you do a uh, you have a, a burlesque group yes. that you and you, you're the organizer of that, correct? Yes, I'm producing the whole thing, and it's it's a really fun adventure. Like I feel so lucky that I found a good group of girls because that's that's really the hard part with producing a burlesque show is like yeah. finding a good solid group of performers who are like not only good at performing and look great, but are like they all get along, they all are really professional, like they know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't have to worry about them. Yeah. They're amazing. That's awesome. That's amazing when you find a group that can yeah. mesh like that. So are you going to keep keep doing what you're doing as long as you can and, and yeah. just go with it? Do you ever think about transitioning to acting and film the feature film world that's not all nudity or whatever? Or? Yeah, I, I like acting. I enjoy acting. I just, like, I don't feel like playing the Hollywood game. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody does. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have the patience for that. So, like, if acting gigs come to me, I will gladly accept them. Yeah. But, <laughs> I'm but you're not, not going to go get an agent. I'm not going to go kiss anybody's yeah. ass about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I, I make my money and I'm happy. So <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm happy for you. And it's been amazing having you on the show. Yeah. Uh, Daisy Ducati is going to be doing a burlesque show at the Pioneer Saloon in Good Springs, Nevada on Wednesday, March 22nd at 8 p.m. If you're in the Las Vegas area, you have to come check out. It's a free show with no cover. So where else can you get that kind right? of entertainment? Daisy and her hot friends all dancing for you for free. I mean, and we've got Miss Nude World coming back. Miss New World will be there. <laughs> so you cannot miss that. So we'll see you there. Thank you so much, Daisy Ducati. This has been What's What with Old Man Liver fucking with you once again. I'll see you next time. It's What's What. It's What's What.